each other in person. Um, Christian and I got a chance to do that not too long ago, and it was great. But there right. you go, Christian. Giddy up. See it. Here we go. You can see that? Excellent. Yes, can. All right. So I would like to present a case study on converting the war industry. I studied New England. The just broad outline, the U.S. war industry is comprised of the corporations that develop, market, and sell goods and services to the U.S. military, to U.S. intelligence agencies, and to allied governments. From harm to helpful. So a few people right now, a relative few, make the decisions that steer our economy. Operating boardrooms and corporate suites, they make a lot of money in the business of war, and they direct the working class to produce goods and services for military and for espionage. But what if the workers were in charge? This is the question. What if the workers were in charge instead of executives? How might the war industry be put to good use? What technology, for example, might help humanity face a changing climate? So I examined the last two full fiscal years of contracts. I parsed out the New England states, and I sorted these based on the good or service produced. This is New England. Uh, you know it. I think you know it. Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. So what does the war industry do in New England? It became clear when I was studying these contracts that it can be the, the goods and services produced can be divided into roughly eight categories. Communications, sensors, ordnance and ordnance disposal, ocean, air, supply, vision, and advanced research and development at labs. Communications. Multiple corporations produce goods and services for communications, particularly in Massachusetts. These are the locations. Worker knowledge. Computer programming and coding, computer networking, cloud computing, all of this goes into making these devices. Hardware manufacturing, logistics, systems engineering. As you can see, none of this is inherently militant. The knowledge and communications products themselves are immediately applicable, without any change, immediately applicable to civilian first responders, disaster relief, infrastructure overhaul, coordinating when you're upgrading our infrastructure, and the, inter the international scientific cooperation necessary for our species survival. If a more uh, national, a narrower national endeavor is more your flavor, high-speed internet access for rural communities, medical diagnostics, nuclear safety, matching the homeless with vacant homes, record keeping and review, coordination when eradicating food deserts, planting local gardens, all of this can be used, can be, um, all of this can benefit from using the communications devices and the worker know-how in New England. Case in point, Raytheon BBN in Cambridge, Massachusetts makes uh, a lot of products, and some of those products are espionage software. Now, instead of using that for harm and for monitoring, can be used to communicate regarding research alloc resource allocation, refugee aid, debt relief, and environmental remediation, as well as exploration of the cosmos. We can connect. We can use that to connect people instead of spying on them. Sensors. Sensors is anything to connect a weapon with another weapon, a computer with a weapon, uh, all the uh, instruments on a ship, et cetera. These are the corporations, the big ones in New England that make sensors. There are their locations. The fundamentals are entirely civilian from computer chips that receive satellite signals all the way to software development and hardware engineering. Peaceful endeavors to benefit Real-time tracking of aircraft used in disaster relief, search for habitable planets, high-speed rail, intraspecies connectivity, wildlife monitoring, and training civilians to assume control of the global positioning system from the military. As you know, that is a Space Force field. Space Force uh, oversees GPS. It doesn't make GPS. It doesn't launch GPS. These are all war industry fields, uh, but it, it, it assumes nominal control over that, even though space is entirely a war corporation endeavor. Ordnance. Ordnance is anything that goes. General Dynamics in Williston, Vermont. You can see there on the map. It makes ammunition, artillery shells, rockets, machine gun barrels, and other ordnance. So one would think that things that go boom cannot be used in a civilian capacity. Okay. 
but the inputs and the worker knowledge absolutely can. Composite materials or composite materials for climate resilient infrastructure, fuses and explosives for civilian construction, metallurgical failure analysis to prevent our D plus infrastructure from becoming a D, maybe we can get it up to a C minus. Research into materials with unusual properties. Case study, case in point right here, Raytheon in Andover in Woburn, Massachusetts makes radar for the service to air missiles. The famous one, most famous being Patriot, Fat is another one. Raytheon makes these radars. The fundamentals of these systems are not military in nature. From the antenna to the circuit cards, all the way to logistics and inventory, all the way to radomes. Radomes are the outer coating of radar, the actual like uh, dish radomes. Uh, take Patriot, for example. Every part of Patriot can be used in a civilian way. The power plant generates the energy, the radar detects and tracks the objects, the consoles that the uh, user interfaces with give graphical representation, the launcher station provides mobility, the antenna group is essential to communication. Okay, All of these are essentially civilian, they don't have to be used in a militant manner. Kinetic. Kinetic makes uh, robots that help the uh, safely explode ordnance, unexploded ordnance, or landmines or improvised explosive devices. Immediately, immediately applicable to demining of conflict zones, including but not limited to Laos, which we had a hand in, southern Lebanon, which we also had a hand in, Yemen, we had a hand in that one, and Colombia, all, we also had a hand in that one. So we can um, use this to help instead of using it to uh, facilitate a military occupation. These are the locations. Military helicopters and aircraft parts. We're about halfway through, so bear with me. You're, you're, doing, you're doing very well. The most famous um, plant in New England for military helicopters and or aircraft parts is Lockheed Martin Sikorsky plant in Stratford, Connecticut. That's in Southern Connecticut, Southwest Connecticut. Makes the helicopters. It makes military helicopters, Pavehawk, Sea Stein, et cetera, but it also makes civilian helicopters, okay? So, a chunk of the plant is already going to civilian capacity. The military helicopters that it makes don't have to be military in nature. A helicopter in and of itself does not have to be military in nature. Uh, there are other locations, Raytheon, Timken, and uh, Raytheon, another one up in um, Vermont. The military helicopters and the aircraft parts manufactured across New England have civilian utility in the fields of aeromedical evacuation, cargo transport, Wildfire, firefighting. We'll get back to wildfires in a bit as well. There are the locations for your viewing pleasure. Aircraft propulsion. GE, General Electric, has a plant in Lynn, Massachusetts, which is just north of Boston. Raytheon's Pratt & Whitney Division has a plant down in Connecticut. Both of these make military engines and civilian engines. So there's already some civilian going on there. Okay, And the military engines, don't have to go to military. Raytheon Pratt and Windley engines for commercial aircraft, including airlines that fly Boeing and Airbus planes. GE's Lynn plant makes an engine for helicopters, makes multiple engines for helicopters, which can be used as we talked about in civilian transport, trade and industry, search and rescue. There's more. GE engines that are produced in New England and used in war also already have experience in civilian fields. So Textron's Bell Helicopters, which uses a GE engine, is used in search and rescue. Again, NASA's Airborne Science Program uses helicopters that use GE engines. Wildlife protection, firefighting, transportation, medevac. Same thing with Pratt & Whitney, okay? The Pratt & Whitney engines produced in Connecticut with other parts throughout New England and, and that are used in war can also power comparable civilian aircraft. The immediate benefits of this conversion is it frees up capacity for existing and future projects, including but not limited to, maybe we need some research into hydrogen propulsion, sustainable fuels, hydropower, spacesuits. Timken, I believe down in Connecticut, which I mentioned very briefly earlier, I think is the one that makes uh, spacesuits, Timken ADS. Uh, rail transportation, fortifying coastal cities, wind and tidal power, and more, anything that you can think about. More benefits. 
maybe there's a, I don't know, a climate crisis brewing and uh, yeah, gaining some steam. The engineers and the computer programmers could be used to tackle this. The ergonomics and logistics, the forges, the hydraulics, there's massive industry infrastructure all the way up to uh, man machine or human machine interfaces, all the way up to super alloys and welding tools. All of this, instead of going to war, go to peace. They can be used in any civilian manufacturing project, anything. Ocean surface is another category that New England produces. The main locations are General Dynamics Bath Iron Works up in Maine, Boston Ship Repair in Boston, and Rolls-Royce Marine of Walpole, Massachusetts makes the uh, ship propulsion. Those are the locations for your viewing pleasure. So what would civilian use look like? Well, there's container ships for cooperative trade. There are dredging ships in order to keep the waterways clear. If you don't dredge your, your river and your waterways, you're not going to be able to travel on it anytime soon. And pre preparation for climate change. Medical evacuation ships, hospital ships, replenishment ships, icebreakers, patrol boats, search and rescue, ambulance transport ships, tugboats, and on and on. And there's a bit about nuclear energy that we can talk about later if there's a question about that. They basically, long story short, they don't have to run on fossil fuel. Case in point, Oasis Systems, Burlington, Massachusetts. The military, as you know, contracts out anything it can. Okay, so Oasis Systems is one of the corporations that uh, owns and operates roll on, roll off ships. If you need to get cargo somewhere, Oasis Systems does a lot of uh, vehicles. You roll on the vehicles, you roll off the vehicles uh, overseas. But it can be, it's, it's used for a lot of things. It can conduct research currently by the military, can conduct military research, salvage, sunken craft, in addition to its primary mission, transporting cargo. Now, I don't know about you, but maybe we should use these ships to fortify coastal cities. There are multiple global cities, that is top tier cities, where humans live, work, and play. Shanghai, all the way to New York. They're all in trouble. Under the sea, what's going on under the sea? Well, there are multiple corporations in New England that make submarines and other submersibles. Okay? The biggest is General Dynamics Electric Boat down in Groton, Connecticut, with some work in North Kingston, Rhode Island. There are also multiple corporations that repair submarines up in uh, Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Kittery, Maine. As soon as you across the border, New Hampshire into Maine. It's right there. I think it's the first exit. And um, there are other corporations around New England that you can see on the screen that make submersibles or components for submersibles. None of this, none of this is inherently militant. From the airlocks and the antenna controllers and the computer processing power, all the way to the shipyard infrastructure and the software management systems. All of it is, is basically, fundamentally, essentially civilian. And all of the, there are many civilian fields, scientific fields, that could benefit from this. Right now, it's, it's technically going to waste. It's not helping humanity. Immediate civilian applications include, but are not limited to, aquaculture, fisheries, working on mine sweeping, mapping the ocean floor, data collection, fortifying transatlantic communication cables, and on and on. Deep sea exploration. How are all of our microplastics impacting marine ecosystems around the world? You trash the oceans, you might want to keep an eye on that. Supply. We're almost done, I promise. Supply. Noble Supply and Logistics in Rockland, Massachusetts is one of the main corporations that gets small gear and office supplies, anything that you need to run a base, really. It, it specializes in this, getting this stuff overseas, getting this stuff to U.S. bases around the states, and running the logistics as well. Okay? Now, civilian applications of the worker knowledge there and the supplies are innumerable. Aid in infrastructure projects, shipping lanes that actually accommodate sea life, divvy out this equipment and handheld gear for emergency services, and reinforce supply chains, deliver material reparations to people's harm, by our wars, Noble could help in that if the workers were in charge. There's Noble's location. Lastly, I think it's lastly, Vision. There are corporations in New England that make 
uh, vision products, products that help humans see better. Mostly this focuses on low light and darkness. Some of these are already used to fight wildfires, see through the smoke, direct the retardants and the firefighters on target, estimate where the fire is going. Okay. The broader civilian application can include fields like archaeology, seismology, planetary exploration in general. You could use this stuff on satellites run by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or our friend NASA. Okay. It doesn't have to be in the war corporation field. We can, as we transition, we can also move some of this back into government instead of the neoliberal priority, which is from government to industry. There are the locations for your viewing pleasure. And lastly, labs. Okay, this is probably the most important part. Greater Boston's military-oriented laboratories attract the brightest minds, the brightest minds, in computer programming, engineering, physics, mathematics. Some of these labs are Charles River Analytics, Draper, famous name right there, MITRE, MIT Lincoln Lab, Raytheon BBN, Systems Technology and Research, many more. They work on the top, most difficult research and development challenges. Research and development for war products, military products, espionage, harm. If directed towards civilian purposes, health, climate adaptation, learning from the natural world, energy generation. Okay. This is all, these are all absolute priority fields that are lacking right now because our best and brightest are funneled towards goods and services related to permanent warfare. We as a species, I'm convinced, we as a species could do anything we want, anything we want. There is every reason to be optimistic. We can do anything we want. We just have to unite and we have to allocate our resources wisely. And those are two things that the military industrial complex does not want. It doesn't want unity. It needs enemies, it needs bad guys. Conclusion. Thank you, by the way, for bearing with me. And there's a lot of information. Unlike other products, excuse me, unlike products from other industries, the products that the war industry produces, most of them, the vast majority, you cannot eat, consume, play with, learn from, or interact with. Okay? Fighter jets, nope. Submarine, nope. Spy satellite, nope. Bomb, nope. Espionage software, nope. And on and on. However, the production capacity in the brains behind all war industry technology, all of it can be put to beneficial civilian use. And here's what's important. Those most qualified to make and implement suggestions regarding civilian application of war technologies are the workers at the facilities. They know the inputs. They know what's coming in. They know how things are produced. They know the machinery. They're the ones who can say, hey, we can best make A, B, or C. We can best convert D, E, and F to uh, civilian products or civilian help with enough political will in New England state houses and a job guarantee from US Congress, New England could quickly transform into a leading force confronting the climate crisis. Thank you for your time, and I yield the floor.